that I got. I'm trying to teach you. This is for the people that don't know about squidding. It's, um, it's a very good sport. It's very addictive. And when you start learning how to do it and you start catching squid, it's, it's great fun. So, because we're in deep water at the moment, what I'm using, all you pretty much need is a light rod. This is a bit over, overkill price range. You know, it's like a Stratic 1000 with some four pound, four pound braid line. You don't really need that, as long as it's light. And you know, don't use anything too thick. As long as it's one to kilo, one kilo, two kilo rod, it's fine. Now, you can use normal line or braid, but braid, braid's a bit better to cast out. It's a bit more smoother. So, because we're in deep water, what I do is I tie, I tie the braid and some fluorocarbon leader onto it. And what happens is, you put two squid jigs on, and you have. Put a little sinker on the bottom, okay? If it's deep, you don't always need it. If it's, if it's pretty shallow, you just pretty much use one squid jig and that's it. There's a variety of colors. This is a natural color, right? And Yamashita is the best. If you go to a tackle shop, just ask for Yamashita, any good squid jigs that work. Natural colors, pinks, etc. So I'll put a sinker on the bottom because it's pretty deep and this will sink to the bottom. So we're gonna have a few casts and see what happens and I'll show you how to retrieve it. Press pause. So what you do is just give it a bit of a cast. Get it fairly out there. <clears throat> so what you want to do, you want it to get sink to the bottom. As soon as it sinks to the bottom, what you do is just give two jigs, bang, bang, like that, and a couple of wine. Let it sink again. Then bang, bang. Lift up like that, let it sink again. And if you keep doing that, 100% you're gonna get squid. So we've got some squid there that we caught earlier. That's really good bait. We're gonna use that tomorrow morning for the kingfish. Sometimes better is, what I usually do is have a basket and I put, the lot, put them in there and keep them alive for the morning, but we didn't bring a basket, so it's the second best thing. So we do let it sink, a couple of jigs, Now what will happen, if you do have a squid, it's not like a fish. What the squid is going to do, it's going to come up and it's going to grab the squid jig. And I'll show you in a second, on the squid jig, it's got little barbs, like little points. And it'll come up and it'll grab it and it'll try to go away with it. So what you've got to do is, don't wheel it in like a fish, don't go too hard. You'll feel a bit of pressure and it will feel like you've got a bit of weed or something. Just give it, just lift and wind come to the surface. Oh, press pause. Yeah, beautiful. Abs is bringing one in now. It's got one on there, the surface. Ooh. Bring it up. Now, beautiful. On your abs. Now, what's happened is the squid, see the tentacles, he's come up and he's grabbed it because he thinks it's like a prawn. Right? So he's come up. Oh, there he goes. He's, they squirt a bit of water, I think. But he's come up with his tentacles and he's grabbed the end. Okay? And he's grabbed it and yeah, just wheel it in. Actually, got it on the way down. Oh, did you? Yeah, oh, good. So it's funny, Abs is using a, a black jig. And it's funny how it's so black out there and he's using a black jig and they can see it because it just got great eyes. And he's using a white one. A white Yamashita and a black jig. So you're going to make sure it just it gets just, untangled. Just mix it up a little bit, really. That's it. So he's gonna, we're going to have another go at it. See if we can get a few more for the morning. All right, Ab's called himself a tailor, and with tailor, you got to make sure they're, you know, legal. So you don't want to cop a fine. This one's well over legal; it's about 40 centimeters. So what he's done is, old Ab's there. He's cut them up some strips. Strips are really good. So he's cut up. We've got a fair few strips out of that. So. That's going to be used in the morning and going to be used tonight for some juice or big flathead or monster brim. So yeah, we've chopped up this one we caught earlier. That's, you know, anything, anything that comes out of the water is good. You know, you don't. People just go down with a fucking hook, sinker, and they expect to catch the uh, rod with a prawn and expect to catch the world. Go down there, 
you know, catch live bait, use the bait that we catch. So this is caught, you know, an hour ago, so it's still fresh. So a lot of the fish they're eating, they're eating what is in the water, you know. You can still get fish on on prawns, etc. So it's a squid we caught. Fresh. So it just pays off. Alright, I'm gonna do a bit of a tackle talk. Alright. I bring out, I always bring out four rods. One for a one for brim, one for squidding and yellowtail. Okay, and I've got this one here. That's like an all-rounder, like jewies or big brim or etc. etc. Kings in the morning. Then I've got my my baby there. That's a Saragossa. They can, you know, they're very strong, pulling a lot of fish, big fish. And the saltest rod. They're pretty expensive, but you know. When the passion's there, you got to spend the big money. All right. I've got another here. This rod's really got a sort of Shimano to res. I've just got a bait runner on it, at 50 pounds. Actually, no, I've got 40 pound on that one. And this one's set up. Okay, the way I've set this one up is I've put a medium-sized sinker, swivel, and just a hook that's about the size, let me get focused there, like a brim hook, big bigger than a brim hook, so you can still kind of hook up a jewy, big brim, etc, etc. So I've got this set up here, the Saragossa, I'll just keep going out of focus, and I've got a big star sinker, they're really good to put on, see these balls here, put a ball on, and it stops any kind of tangling or anything like that, so that's not bad. And it comes down to the leader, 40 pound, and a nice 6-0 hook. So I've got two jewelry rods set up. Another one here with my sea jigger and just a bait runner. Bait runner's really pretty much 150, 140, so they're not too bad. Running 40 pound line, come up to a ball, ball sinker. Um, fairly big, I don't know the weight of it. And a big swivel. I've got another 40 pound with a 5 -0. so it's a bit smaller. So I've got the 6 0 and the Saragossa 5 0, and I've got a brim hook on that one. Then obviously, I've shown you my squid jig, squid jitting rod, squidding uh, rod. Spit it out, Mick. And I've got my brim rod here. I use for my brim rod, it's called a <coughs> C14 Plus, Shimano, 2500, Stratic. They're brilliant rods, brilliant reels, sorry I should say. And I've got a Daiwa rod, three piece, two to five kilos. It's three piece, it's beautiful. Running 15 pound line, so that's perfect for the brim. And when you come to see the way I've set up my brim rod, just got a small sinker, small swivel, and 10 pound line down to a brim hook. So that's my tackle talk. With my tackle, you know, just got to use a Abu Garcia bag, beautiful. Got some sinkers. Look, these are really good. With this, I like using these. My mate here loves using his boxes with all his hooks and sinkers in. I don't like doing that because if it gets wet it tends to rust up. These really nice bags here. You just put all your sinkers all the different sizes. It's just like a book. You can just go through everything. It's beautiful. I love these bags. And then I do use boxes but I just tend to put more squid jigs in there etc etc. He's cleaning up his stuff right now. These are really good when you for your squid jigs. Just whack these in here, easy to get out, put your colours in there, beautiful. So yeah, that's the tackle talk, and that's what I like to use, to be continued. Another thing I want to explain to you guys, is leaders. See this leader here? Beautiful leader, it's 40 pound, but that's with bigger fish. 
if you ever go to the fishing tackle places and see how it says here fluorocarbon okay fluorocarbon is it's so much better like the fish can't see it in the water like I was explaining before and I've got all different sizes so four pound for the smaller like brim and and, and catching squid small squid etc and there's eight pound fluorocarbon that's got no pounding on it but I think that's about about four pound that's eight pound and you got ten pound so it's it's good when you start fishing you will realize all this kind of stuff and just get leaders it's just so much better and the fishing success rate so much better so I've got 20 you know so the thinner the line is the better success rate but if you do get a big fish it's just gonna break your line and you'll be spewing but yeah so using thinner line and and good quality line for leader is just it's just beautiful to be continued Another thing you can do, one thing, don't leave your rubbish around. Always clean the wharf like we do, because then people will get the fucking shits and we won't be able to fish here much longer. What he's done is he's tied his line. You can tie it to anywhere as long as it's secure and he's gonna test the line. So you can see, you know, if, you, if we do get a big king or something big, test the line first. Always make sure that it's, you know, not gonna break on you or the, the knots are not tied, etc., etc. So I got my brim rod, alright, remember I told her earlier that we caught that big tailor, so I've got a piece, etc. big, obviously a small sinker, brim hook, with the brim, these hooks here are great, see it's got the little edges there, so it keeps the bait holding, so you want to, with brim you just want to put it through once, Three times. Etc. Uh, pretty much like the Dewey way we do it, three times, but just a smaller bait. So the fish gonna come along and get hooked. Give it a cast, mate. system is at the top here so what happens is if you go put down your rod and the fish decides to take it the rod is going to go flying into the water it's happened to me it's happened to probably a few other people out there so what you do loosen the drag so when the fish pulls you want it to make that noise okay so when you put your rod down, because at the end of the day, a lot of people just come with their rod and they put a prawn on, like I said, and they just stand like this and wait for your fish to come. It's very boring. So you've got to wait for the fish to come to the rod. So at least you know, you can put the rod down and wait. And when that makes a noise, the drag noise goes off, come to the rod, depending on the size of the fish, Pulling really hard, it's a bigger fish, so I wouldn't tighten it too hard. Just tighten it enough so you can get your line back in. And then you'll feel if it's running continuously, still heavy, running, just tire it out. But most of the time, it depends what kind of gear you got, you'll feel how heavy it is and then just play with the drag. So when you tighten the drag, then you can start winding, winding the fish. comes to my second rod. So I always cast out about four rods. So I got my bait. Come closer. Oh look at this guy. How you going mate? How you going? Row, row, row your bait. <laughs> so I'm gonna put a piece on. So this setup here is with a heavier rod. You can use it for kingies or jewies or anything. So what I've done is 
Like I've, you've seen the sinker, it's on the Therese. The hook isn't too big, so I've caught a lot of big fish with little hooks, so you don't always have to put a big hook to catch big fish. A lot of big fish even take small bits of bait. So I'm going to put that on. Oh, this is really strong, this bait, so it's good. Back that on, and that's ready to go. I'm going to give that a big cast. You can get, I've all been caught dew fish or little bits of bait, so. Cast it out there, wait till it sinks. Goes all the way, it depends how deep it is. Pretty deep here. Alright, sit the bottom. So what you want to do, you want to wind your slack. The slack is on the on the front. You don't want to just drift in, you want it straight. You want it to go straight to forward into the water. Like I said, these are different, it's a bait runner. Put the bait runner on. So when the fish pulls, you hear it pull. When you wind it, it goes into gear and locks. So you want to put your rod down. Don't forget to put the bait runner on and sit and wait and enjoy. So I've got my third rod here, the 12 foot bait runner. So a six hook. Obviously I'm going for bigger fish with this, this kind of hook and this setup. So I'm going to put a nice big piece on of, uh, of tailor. And rem remember you've got to have, the tailor has to be legal. You can't kill it, you've got to throw it back if it's underside. The legal size is 30 centimeters. Yeah. Is that the size? 30 centimeters? Yep. So I put this through, right? So that's going to flap in the water. But when it's in the water, when the water, the sinker will, the, the sinker will go to the bottom and the current will kind of push this so it kind of flaps around. So that kind of attends to the attention of the fish. Make sure you don't smash your rod up in the roof. Good cast. Like I said, always check the top to make sure the drag is on or you will lose your rod. Alright, baits are out. We're just gonna wait and see if we get anything. the selection so the white top it's not on bro yeah. the light's not on is it, is it the top is the time going <laughs> there you go. yep there's another spin there now we've got a live skew here okay good live skew I tend this to Hit the hook and just pierce it just into its back, the tip of it, like that. So you want to keep it alive as much as possible. Because it's now almost 6.30, so that's alive. I'm going to put it in the water and hopefully you get a clean fish to show you. I just lost the squid. <laughs> Well, I think I'm on. I think I'm on to the squid. You're on? Yeah. Hold him, hold him, hold him. Yeah. You're on still? Hopefully, yeah. Alright. Hopefully, Abs is on. Not let go. Not let go. 
Okay. I'm one of the night catch and release. Let's, do we have, let's have a look at it, bro. Come here. See, what's it got in its mouth? What's that? Uh, it looks like a... A bit of white bait. See, that's what they're chasing. Uh, but see their mouths? They're really big, all right? It's a small one. We're going to release it. It's just five centimetres under. They're supposed to be 65 centimetres or 70. I'm not too sure. I've got to read up, but I'm pretty sure that was 65. Yeah. So we're going to release it back into the water. What you do, you can just throw it in or just let it get some air in, into its gills. Oh, didn't even need any air. It took off. Beautiful. So if you throw them back, mate, there's more to catch for other people. We want the grandfather one. Great grandfather. <laughs> All right, Mick and Ab's fishing adventures. Would you? Yep, he's got a dew fish. He won't snap it. Just got back from getting mackers. Baby. Baby. Still. baby. Still. <laughs> it's a Jewy, cute Jewy. Did the hook come out of his mouth just then? So I told you. Huh? You gonna release him or keep him? No, I thought release him. You gonna release him? Yeah. Alright, good. Yeah. I think it's a start. Good man. Yeah. Oh. The bait did its job. So we've got a king on here. Come on, get her up. Yeah. Yeah. I'm my line. That's right, I'll fix it up. Oh, that's not my line, that's not my line. 